Hi Floss Tube, it's Jen, also known as Quirks and Stitches. I'm back for my third video. Um, in true planning fashion, I meant to be back last week. Um, had it all written out, wanted to do a recap of all the March starts and um, kind of start April fresh, um, but just like has happened every other other week, I missed it. Um, so I am now figuring that maybe a every two weeks or once a month recap is going to work better for me. Um, so I'm back and I wanted to share a little bit of my stitching with you guys. Um, I'm in a different zone in my house. This is my stitching spot. This is where I spend a lot of my time. Um, especially lately, my energy level has been pretty, pretty low. Um, so I have thank you to all of you who follow me on Instagram that expressed well wishes and everything as I'm trying to figure out what's going on with my body. Um, so I appreciate that. Hopefully we'll be getting some answers soon and um, have some doctor's appointments coming up. So working on some self-care and some uh, things that work to calm my nerves a little bit. Um, but I, I don't think it's anything too crazy. I just think, you know, got to get some things regulated, right? So um, anyway, thank you very much. And um, I appreciate it. Uh, so it's kind of lent itself well, though. I mean, I wanted to do a whole lot of stitching in March. And I did that because I honestly couldn't do much else. So um, between the energy expended at work and just coming home, I a lot has fallen to my husband. So, and he's picked up the slack pretty nicely, but, um, I'm looking forward to getting back to, to myself a little bit. Um, so I'm here, I'm in my stitching spot, a uh, couple different things. I am um, also not wearing my glasses, which is totally a little bit out of my comfort zone right now too. Um, I, was stitching on 40 count earlier and I see a whole lot better with my contacts. So I switched it out, but I typically, and I'm planning on stitching later. Otherwise I probably would have taken them out and put my glasses back on. Um, but I, I, uh, I have my contacts in, so that's a little bit different. Um, you're probably going to hear and see animals all over. Mayhem may even make an appearance as she comes down the steps. Um, pandemonium, I am sure at some point, is going to attempt to get back here. This is where she sits um, pretty much all the time. Um, when I'm stitching, she is right behind me kicking her legs into my neck, and it is <laughs> quite annoying. But, um, you know, she's old, and... She's also deaf. I think I mentioned that before. So you probably will hear her making really loud meowing noises. Um, but, you know, who knows? So anyway, um, I thought I would just, I wanted to be a little cozier today. So that's that's why I made the swap. Um, I have kind of my things kind of around me. I do. I have my, my Ot light here. However, to be honest, I don't have an Ot light bulb in it. So I don't think it really, you know, works like it's supposed to. But during the summer, our house is not air conditioned. So it gets really hot um, burning on my um, shoulder. So I swapped it out to an LED, just regular light and it works. Um, I do keep the uh, light bulb there. Um, I realized as I was cleaning off my little, my little shelf, um, that it was there, but I, uh, I, I don't know what I thought there was something on my shoulder, elbow, not shoulder. Um, but there wasn't, so sorry. <laughs> um, getting used to this setup a little bit. Also, I own things other than hoodies. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm totally like having this sports vibe going. I, I don't follow sports, but I, I love my hoodies. So when I'm not having to dress business casual for work, I'm usually in like leggings, pajama pants, and some sort of hoodie. So if I'm home, that's what I'm going to be wearing. So that's what you're going to be seeing. Um, but back to my, I'm all over the place today. You know, it's, it's Sunday. It's a lazy day. It's just, you're going to get all of the rambles. Um, so my, my area, I have my Ot light. I have, um, my collection of pens. I'm kind of a pen snob. So I, I will only write with this kind. Um, and it has to be the Pilot G 2.38 I like a really fine pen so I keep them scattered everywhere there's they're in my purse they're at work they're here um because I I will only write with them um and I keep my scissors these are the best scissors I have I'm really terrible with scissors so um I try to keep some nearby that will cut like my pattern cards and I use these to cut fabric that's probably not good and you can hear Pandy because she's you know gonna be annoying and 
make herself known. So um, that's kind of always nearby with what I'm doing. I keep post-it notes and magnets. I'm not a needle minder person, but I use magnet boards to store my patterns on. Um, so I have a lot of um, this sort of magnet laying around. It's also how I track where I'm going in my pattern. Um, I don't, I don't stitch digitally. I need a paper pattern with me and, um, this just kind of, I move this to, to where I'm stitching and it guides me. Um, so I keep a lot of them. I, I actually, I have like probably 25 magnet boards and I realized I had no magnet strips. <laughs> My mom, well, she just laughs cause I'm, I'm ridiculous with supplies. So, um, we ordered a whole bunch off of one, two, three stitch. And now every stitching store that we go to, I'm looking for the little magnet strips. Um, I'm also the same way with needles. I tend to use one needle for all of my projects. So I would just like, swap it from project to project. Before I started Stitch Madness, I realized that was going to be silly. That was not a smart way to go about it. So I found a site on eBay that, um, or a store on eBay that sold the John James needles in bulk. So I bought a 25 pack and I have one with each project that I'm stitching. So now I'm not like constantly searching for needles. Um, but I keep the extras in either the little bags that they came in or little things like this. Um, keep these away from your pets though. Cause once um, my cats knocked it on the floor and my dog ate it and we weren't sure. <laughs> so she had this bed that was a bear and um, I came home and there were needles all over her bed. Um, and she hadn't eaten them earlier in the day. It was like when I, after I had gotten home, but um we weren't sure how many needles were in the case. And so it ended up in x-rays and everything. So keep these away from your pets. They thought I was a terrible pet owner and not a responsible crafter. Um, but I'm usually pretty good. So, uh, just, you know, my little public service announcement for today. Um, I also keep nearby my or, or old ratty thread store. Um, I do, I love having this. Um, I've stitched a lot this year because <laughs> I, I emptied this out in January. Um, if I'm using specialty floss and I get to an end, I will put it in a little baggie uh, for the most part. But if it's just DMC, I, I don't, like I'll look on the pattern and if there's not a whole lot of counting that will need to be done, I will um, use it continuously, but I'm not a one color stitcher. So I, I generally go in... Um, in sections. Um, so, but really I, I, I'm pretty like, I try to get as much out of my thread as I can, but still, this is what I've collected since January. I have saved all of my other ones. I haven't, um, last year's I think was combined with the year before because I wasn't in a real stitching, um, frame of mind. I did a lot of knitting and crocheting in the past couple years. So I combined those. Um, but other than that, I have all my other years and I, thought, I was trying to like, I really like to track things. So I wanted to see if there was a way like that I could tell how much stitching, if it related to the amount of stitching or not. So I used to weigh them. Like I'm very particular and precise. Um, I, I don't know if I'll ever do anything with them. Um, but I love having the jar and I don't know. I, if I have my stitching to go, like I don't, get a little like, Oh, what do I do with the ends? Like, I don't, I don't know what to do. So I think I need like a little mini one that I can carry with me. Uh, I don't know. Um, again, it's one of those ways that my mom and I are different. She's just like, I don't, I don't need one of those. I use all it all the way to the end. And I, I don't know. I don't. So, um, that's always near me. And then over here I have, this is my works in progress basket. Um, right now it's not filled with all of my works in progress because since Stitch Madness, there have been a whole lot more. Um, but it has, you know, different projects. I'm, I'm not fancy. I don't have fancy project bags. Someday, maybe I would love to learn how to sew. I have a sewing machine. I've never used it. Um, so I don't know, but right now there's a blocks and I just keep them, you know, here and easy access. And about once a week or so, I try to go through and like organize them and get them back. Um, it was a little more overwhelming with the Stitch Madness because there were just so many new starts that each day required a lot of organization with it. Um, normally I work on something for several days in a row before I'm swapping back and forth. So I 
don't have to like, I'm not in and out of project bags quite so much. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's kind of what I keep nearby, close by. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else bright and ready. Not really. Um, I'm not a big supply person. I have my, you know, my little scissors. I don't know where they, oh, these are my scissors. I have an owl pair too, but they lost, um, they lost their sharpness. So Brandon got me these for Christmas. Um, I think I'm gonna maybe beef up my, you know, scissor supply. I don't know. It's, I like things. <laughs> I really shouldn't, but um, I do. I, I accumulate collections and it's my stash and I like it. So I go with it. Uh, I like this mug because it, it has the writing on both sides. And so I don't have to worry about which way it's facing when it's on the screen. Mugs are another th collection of mine. I used to decorate my walls with them. So I'm a real fan of functional decorations. Um, so like during the ho like holidays and Halloween and Christmas, I will um, decorate with mason jars filled with candy. Um, my kitchen is filled with mason jars everywhere. Um, and they're, they're storage, but they're, you know, pretty. But mugs are a big thing. I have them kind of hanging everywhere. I have aspirations of like a mug tree or shelf or something. I'm going to take a sip of coffee now because I'm holding it and it's getting off. But, um, okay, enough about all the other stuff. <laughs> You're here to see the stitching, and so I will, um, I want to show you the rest of my starts. I've had a couple finishes. I was really trying to just document each day's stitching. Um, when I was doing Stitch Madness, I wasn't moving on to anything else unless I had a finish. Um, so you could kind of see how many like how much progress I was making in one day's worth of stitching a couple of these since stitch madness is done I'm trying to get some finishes now so I've gone back to and done several more days in um, I really think it would be interesting it's something I didn't track before these starts to see how many days it takes to work on something before you get that finish so I do keep a calendar um, that says, you know, oh, on this day I was stitching this, and on this day I stitched on this. Um, so I can kind of go back and track it. There's no way for me to track the ones that have been worked on for years. Um, so it makes me a little sad. I'm not going to lie, I do like to go back and have the answers from the very beginning of things. Um, but, you know, I, I can't, so I'm going to have to deal with it and figure out how to, to track it in a way that's meaningful to me and if it's even necessary. I have several um, kind of prototype tracking designs in my bullet journal that aren't going to be practical so it it doesn't really show what I want it to show so I haven't figured out how I'm going to do it yet um, but I thought that would be an interesting thing to do. All that to say some of these are multiple days of work now. Um, I'll try to remember which ones I I did. You probably don't care as much as I do, but you know, that's how it is. Okay, so back to Sunday, March 25th. Yes, um, it was a Sunday. And so I did my, I'm going to start a little project and hopefully get a finish on it. And I did. Um, Brandon's playing video games and something dramatic just happened. I'm not sure, but he is not, not too happy. He's being very quiet, though. So I'm impressed with him. <laughs> um, so Anyway, March 25th was a Sunday. Little start, decided, wanted to see if I could get a finish. Um, so I did this Alphabet Pumpkin by JBW Designs. Um, I've had it in my stash for forever. Um, again, it's just, you know, one of those that has been there that it's like, oh, I should stitch that. Um, so that's one of the things I really liked about this, this March Madness was that I actually started these things that have been there forever. Um, because again, I was, those of you that are new, I, I didn't stitch, I stitched 31 different designs, 31 different designers, and um, it was only patterns that I had in my stash. I didn't go out and buy new patterns. I did buy new supplies. However, I tried to use my um, supplies that I had here first. So I was really kind of mindful of that when I was, was purchasing. Because I'm also, um, those of you that are aware of the Stitch from Stash, um, I am still supporting my designers and I will show you some of the haul that I've purchased over the past few weeks. But um, I'm really trying to, to be mindful that I have these designs that have been sitting and I, I really want them stitched. So I'm trying to, to go through some of those too. Um, 
I'm also trying to be like, oh, maybe I'm never going to love this. Maybe it's time to either let it go or um, I don't need to st stitch it just because I own it. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I'd be, there's no way I will ever get through all of the patterns that I have in my collection. I just I won't. I would love to. I would love for this to be my only thing that I do in life, but it's unfortunately not, never will be. So anyway, all that to be said, I did have a finish on the alphabet pumpkin. Um, I don't know, the lighting in here is hard to get it to focus. I was having some issues earlier. I used the specialty threads for this. Um, it's just on a scrap piece of, I think, 36. I'll find out. Hold on. Um, it's just a 36 scrap. Um, I, I think I might've done Hocus Pocus on this with, by Prairie Schooler. Um, I can't remember, but I thought it turned out really cute. Um, I like the little, you know, swirls. Again, I used the called for colors. I, they're not as dramatic as I would have liked. And it might be because it's on the fabric I did. Um, I, when I stitch on 36 count, I only use one strand of thread. So, um, you know, it's very light and, you know, I don't, I don't know how I'll finish it. I would love to have a little basket of smalls like that, but again, sewing not, not my strong suit. So I don't know if a pillow will actually happen. Okay. Um, Monday, the 26th, I, um, started one and this is one that I've actually gone back and done two more days worth of work on. Um, and it was Annie B.C. I use post-its all the time. They're all over in there because I will calculate my size and um, how much space I'm going to need in my fabric. And then I have it right there. So when I'm doing my start, I'm ready to measure it. Measuring tape everywhere with me because um, I am paranoid that I'm going to start them wrong because <laughs> I have <laughs> several times. Um, but this is God Save the Queen. Um, as I've been going back now that these are all started, I'm trying to um, figure out which ones I want to finish first. So right now I'm gearing towards um, trying to get something up and running. I don't know where to put this stuff. Um, I don't have as much space since I'm not at my table. Um, up and up for spring and summer. So I was like, well, if they're little enough that I think I'm going to be able to get a finish on them, you know, before I'm out to visit my mom in May and we're going to do some framing, then I'll try to do that. So, um, I've gotten a pretty decent start on this one then. I think it'll be finished in a couple of days. Um, I love it. I think it's fantastic on this fabric. I'm using the called for, um, it's just the DMC and the 40 count picture this plus legacy. Um, and I, I just think the modeling is fantastic. I do have a lot of things stitched on legacy now cause I bought a bunch of pieces of it. I used the 32 count for the Lizzie Kate, um, spring, summer, and winter alphabets. Fall was done on doubloon, I think. Um, and then this, when I was planning stitch madness, I, I also thought about, okay, I'm going to have uh, a B thing done on Legacy. Maybe I don't want another spring piece stitched on Legacy too. So like I think I did Isabella Black. I started her on this as well, but they won't be hung in the house at the same time or right next to each other. Um, I like very neutral fabrics, so I don't have a whole lot of diversity, but I, I like to maybe not have them, especially if they have like a modeling or something like that right next to each other um, displayed. But I am loving this. It's again, this is why the contacts are in is because it's 40 count and I'm blind. So, uh, <laughs> but it is, it's a fun piece. Um, it's my first bee piece. My mom um, does bees in the summer. When I taught before I got married, my name was Miss B. Uh, so I, well, my, my last name was Baron Baum. It was very long. So I, the kids didn't do that. They called me Miss B. So I do have like a little, you know, soft spot for bees. So I figured I would bring them in to my decorating in my house. So I'm very thematic. I think it comes from teaching. So, I, you know, it's how I work. There's a lot of focusing going in and out and I don't know why. Um, Monday, this one again is one that I've kind of come back to a little bit. I've done two others in this series. Um, it's the Cardinal Sampler, um, by From the Heart. 
Uh, this is my working copy. I do have the original upstairs. Um, but I love birds. And so I, um, I try to, to bring them in. I don't actually like birds. <laughs> don't a lot. Like, I don't know anything about birds. If I see them out in the, like, wild, I'm not anything about them. But in decorating, I really do like them. So uh, I have a bird tattoo. I have, um, you know, just they're kind of one of the features that I'll look for to, to bring into my decorating. So this is Cardinal Sampler. Um, I've stitched the, which ones have I stitched? Blackbird and Bluebird, I think. I think I have Goldfinch still to do. Um, this right now, again, it's a couple of days work. Um, it's one that I carry with me um, as I'm in and out. I figured it was simple enough that it would be a good purse project. So it's on, I think, a 35 count, just I think a lamb's wool. It's what I was doing um, Village of Hawk Run Hollow on. I think there was another piece that I was doing this on too um, that I dismantled because I just, it wasn't wasn't flowing for me. So, um, but that's the Cardinal Bird Sampler. And again, I'm doing it at 35 count. I'll just use one strand as well. Um, so there's, you know, there's not a whole lot of cover. Like there's, it's kind of dainty. And um, maybe if I focus it, I'm still trying to focus on me. Maybe if I'm behind it. I don't know. Um, it's still kind of dainty, but I really do like it. Um, and then on Wednesday, I started the Drawn Thread One Skeletons Dance. Again, another one I've had forever, um, but I just, I hadn't gotten it, gotten around to it. Um, this I'm doing on a 40 count again. I didn't get very far on this one, um, but I'm doing it on 40 count exemplar. And it's just the, the first part of the witch's body. I am using the specialty threads for this one, so, um, but I'm not doing individual stitches unless I feel like it's going to really add to it. I really love this fabric. It's hard to tell, but it has like kind of a pinky hue to it. It's what I'm doing um, Riley Harbor on as well. So, got started on that one. Um... I'm all over the place today. I'm sorry. I don't mean to keep apologizing, but I don't want to bore you guys either. So, um, Thursday's start was needlework ABCs. I have a craft room upstairs, um, that I have all of my supplies in. Um, it's also our guest room. Um, but I've done very little decorating in it and I don't, I don't really spend a whole lot of time in there. This is my stitching spot. So I don't stitch up there. I stitch down here. Um, but it's where I'll reorganize floss. It's where, um, you know, I'll, I'll plan my projects, things like that. Cause I can just spread out a little bit more. Um, and if I need to, I can keep the cats out of my space there. Although mayhem gets really mad when I shut her out of that room because she's just territorial, I guess. I don't know. Um, anyway, this is, um, needlework ABCs. I figured all that to say that, um, I would start doing some sewing projects, stitching and have that be able to decorate my craft room. Um, so I picked this one up, uh, when I got it though, I got it at a store out in Ohio and I pulled the pattern out and I'm like looking at it and I'm like, this doesn't match. I got the fall pattern, but the, and I got a kit for it. So it came with all the, the classic color works, um, threads but it was the fall pattern. Um, Little House was awesome. Like I contacted them right away and she was on the ball and apparently there had been a switch with a couple of them because um, I think it was it was for market last year. Um, and so they sent me out the, the right pattern. And um, yeah, so I got started on that finally. I'm doing this on a 36 count country mocha. It's going to be very long. But it's, uh, it's been a fun stitch. I am using the specialty, like I said, the classic color works. I really like the, the color variation there. Um, the, the flowers aren't real pink. Um, I could have been better about like de being deliberate with where I was starting the thread from to get a little bit more of that pink. And I might, um, as the color is repeated, like in other areas, but it's, it's been a fun stitch. I like it so far.
this one and the last two projects that I had were like, I had them all planned and then it didn't work. Like I went through all of my other projects and everything lined up how I wanted it to, how I had planned for, and these just did not. Um, I picked up this pattern Quaker Fox by the work basket. Um, I have a thing for foxes. So uh, I have, there's some around now. There's a fox over there. Um, but I, I wanted to bring them more into my house. So um, I picked it up and I was gonna, I planned to do it on this 40 count scrap that I had. And I sat down to start it and it was like, I don't know if it was just where I picked to start or what, but it just, it didn't feel like they were even. Um, it felt like I was going to stitch for a while and it was going to be, um, you know, going one way was going to be longer than the other. I don't know how to describe that. Um, which is weird because like the, the little test to see what the count was came out even so I don't know I might try this fabric again it was just a piece of scrap I had um in my stash so I may just part with it I don't know um but it, it just I was sitting there and I was like I can't do this this is, <laughs> is not gonna work for me um so I had a piece of 28 count flax uh linen that I was planning to do my last start on um but I was gonna do it one over one so I had this that was a mishap and I'll explain in a minute. Um, so I had this piece just sitting near my chair and so I just pulled it out. I will cut it. Um, I didn't yet because I didn't feel like doing all the math. So um, I started him. Um, he'll probably be my like travel project once I finish the cardinal sampler um, just because it's 28 counts so it's easy to see no matter what the lighting is wherever I'm at. Um, just using DMC for him. But I think he's sweet. I think he's cute. So, Bye. okay, I'm back. Um, so my last start, I had been doing all these different designers. And those of you that have followed my stitching in the past, um, and my mom was like shocked. She's like, Jen, you haven't done any Plum Street yet. Like, you're a huge Plum Street stitcher. What's what's going on? And it's because I was gearing up to do the Halloweenies. I have this whole set. Um, and I have, you know, my puppy's a dachshund corgi mix. So I have a little bit of a, you know, love for the, the dachshund breed. And so I was all, all geared up to do this, but I saw it at a shop in Ohio. Again, I think the crafty you, um, and it was done one over one and I loved it. Um, it was just very, you know, little and just, I, I really liked the way it was done. So I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to stitch one over one. Um, and I hated it. I hated it. Um, and it made me so sad. I don't know if it was the fabric. I, like I have said in the past, I am not a hoop stitcher. So I stitch in hand and having to go from doing like the sewing method that I use to like a punch and stab just was like, I couldn't do it. And I tried, I pulled out, um, I do have a couple Q snaps. Um, but I, I just, it wasn't, it wasn't right for the moment. And I might go back to it and try it again one over one. Um, but for right now, I just, I needed something else. So I went upstairs to my craft room and I was like, okay, what else can I do? What else do I have that is ready to go? Um, that will kind of end Stitch Madness with a bang. Um, so that was the other thing. Like, I like the Halloweenies. I've been excited to stitch them, but I don't feel like it's an accurate representation of my stitching. So um, I was kind of like, I was very deliberate to start uh, Stitch Madness with a project that I love. I wanted to kind of beef up being deliberate about stopping it and ending it with something that I was really excited about. Um, so I pulled out this piece, which is, uh, sorry for the glare, a ghoul tide welcome. Um, and it is, it's a huge one. It's another, <laughs> I was trying not to start any more really big ones, but it just needed to happen. Um, and it calls for it on a 36 count vintage sand dune by Lakeside Linens. And I had a piece of 36 count sand dune, so it's not quite what it called for, but, and, and then by random happenstance, I went into my, um, craft room. And a lot of times if I'm gearing up to do a project, I'll pull the DMC for it. Um, and I had all of them on my card that I made up these, I make these cards, um, for all of my projects and, um, all the floss was there. So I was like, ah, it's destined. I've got almost the fabric. I've got all the floss. I can, I can do this start. 
and I, I fell in love. I love this piece. It is beautiful. Um, and it is so fun to stitch. And this was just one day. I just sat, I think, all day. <laughs> I, I didn't do anything. And I wanted to stitch more on it. But I just, I, this was last Saturday. And I just faltered a little bit. But it is so much fun. Um, I can't say enough how much I'm enjoying it. So I was really excited. It was a frustrating in a way to have to change up my plans. I like to stick to what I decide to do. Um, but I feel like changing it for that reason, um, and into a piece that I was like really, really excited to stitch for was worth the swap. Um, so that was my stitch madness recap. Um, 31 starts, 31 days. It was a lot of fun. It was, you know, challenging <laughs> in a way that I've not challenged myself with stitching before. I learned a lot about like fabric choices that I like um, because honestly, like I've, I've stitched for a long time, but I used a lot of my mom's supplies. So um, a lot of my fabric choices in particular, I, I haven't known what I what I really liked um, until now. So, you know, I've, I really like Lakeside Linens. I really like some of the specialty flosses, um, you know, and it, it's just... <laughs> That's Watson. Somebody's outside and she's being a little bit of a brat right now. Watson Lee. <laughs> She'll continue to be a little bit of a brat. But, um, it, you know, it was just it was kind of eye opening to be like, OK, this is what I, I like. You know, this is how I want my stitching to be um, and be well, able to kind of still share this hobby with my mom and have all of those things, but realize that we can do it a little differently and that's okay. Um, so I, I really appreciate the stitch madness for that reason. Um, I, I think the thing I didn't like about it was when you would really just kind of be getting into the zone of a piece, you had to stop. And I mean, you don't have to like, you can stitch whatever you want. Like I could just start a piece the next day and then go back to that. But that wasn't how I was doing it. So, um, you know, it was, that was a little bit frustrating to me. Um, but other than that, it was, it was really neat kind of going forward to see how, how I stitch and the counts I like, the counts that I'm dreading, you know, like I, I really thought 40 count was my favorite. I like stitching on that, but I love 36 and I love the coverage that I get. And, um, so to kind of learn that was, was interesting. You know, I've, I don't, it was neat that I still can learn things about this craft. It's, um, you know, so I enjoyed it. Um, I'm looking forward to the people that are going to be doing stitch mania and seeing all of their starts. And maybe next year when my May isn't as crazy, I'll be able to, to do that with you guys. Um, and, you know, we'll see. Maybe I'll get ambitious and try to do some more new starts in May. I don't know. Um, I have had a couple finishes since Stitch Madness ended. Um, I've gone back and um, I finished this piece, which is Neighborhood Row by Bent Creek. Um, I know a lot of people will do all their ironing and things um, before they show their pieces. I, I try not to crinkle as I go, so I, I roll when I stitch, um, but I, I'm i scared to iron. Um, I don't iron my clothes. I don't, I mean, I own an iron, but I think it's still in its box. So without supervision, <laughs> I, I'm really nervous to do that. So I, I don't know. Like, I, I think, you know, I think maybe with some of the stuff my mom might be ending up out visiting to me, um, just with things going on in my life. So I may have her do like a ironing tutorial with my supplies. Um, I've done ironing at her house with her iron and her towels and all of that. I don't know. I'm just, I'm hesitant. So all that to say, you're not probably going to see press pieces from me. Um, and it's not because I don't take pride in my work. It's not because of any of that. It's because I'm scared of breaking my work. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm slowly, slowly getting there, um, becoming a kind of grown up stitcher. This piece is a lot more wrinkled. Um, but those of you that follow me on Instagram have seen that it was finished. This is ABC one, two, no, ABC dash XYZ by Poppy Seed Creations, not Poppy Seed. 
Wow, this is ABC-XYZ by Poppy Creations with K. Um, I changed the um, color for the letters. It was a balsam fur and I changed it to black coffee um, and I really like it. I've gone back and forth about the stars. I like the stars. It's an element that I really like about it. I'm not sure I love the multicolored. Um, so it is something that I don't know. I just, I feel like it makes it really country and I'm not real country. I'm, I kind of, I mean, I love farmhouse stuff, but, um, and I want a farmhouse. So maybe in, in a farmhouse it would do, I don't know. I think I just need to see it with the, the frame that we choose. And then I think I'll like fall in love with it. Watson's still really growling and it's annoying Brandon. So he's snapping at her. Um, so you probably hear that right now. So those are my finishes that I've had though in the past week. Um, like I said, I'm going to try to go through all of my starts and see which ones are going to be possible to finish before May. Um, also kind of focusing on ones that will be possible to finish that need to be hung sooner rather than later. So I'm probably not going to pull out any Halloween starts or anything like that because I know how to decorate my house for Halloween. So um, even if I don't end up getting those things framed before this year, um, yeah, I have enough because Halloween's my season. So it's, it's all good. Uh, I did pull off from my wall. I wanted to share with you guys one, um, fully finished piece that I have. Um, I'm trying to, to do that each time just so you can kind of see what's, what's up in my house, um, at the time being. So, and <laughs> It's still Christmas, so I didn't want to pull out a Christmas piece to show you right now because I'm not going to admit that I still, I mean, I did admit that I still have Christmas up, but you don't see it, so you only hear it. So I didn't want to showcase a Christmas piece in April. Um, anyway, this is Moon Dance, and it's by Kathy Barrick. Um, I have it in, I'm trying to get like an antique frame that my mom found. Um, typically I like my things framed really close to the edges. So there's a lot more showing here. So I, when I stitch, I only give myself like a inch and a half to a two inch allowance for framing. Um, my mom does my framing for me. So, um, that's all she needs and she knows how we like it, um, close. This one, I, I decided I didn't care because I love this piece in this frame. Um, and I think it, it complements it really well. I did this on a 40 count. It was my first go into 40 count. Um, I wanted to practice with it before I committed to doing autumn at Hawk run on 40. Um, I thought about showing that one to you, but sitting in this chair and it's really long. <laughs> I didn't want to get into that today. So, um, but this is Moon Dance. I didn't love it while I was stitching it. It took me a really long time to finish it. Um, it's hard to see all the like, but there's like a lot of checkerboards and the birds um, and things like that. But this is one of the pieces that I have up in my house that I really do like. <coughs> I also um, have some stash, no, not stash, added stash. I have some haul that I've gotten uh, the past couple weeks that I thought I would share with you. I came home the other day and there were three packages from one, two, three stitch on my uh, entertainment stand. And I was really excited. Um, so I picked up some pieces that I've had on my wish list for a while or that were on sale um, that I figured I have a bunch of gift cards. So I'm like, I'm not going to save them all for years and years like I tend to do. I'm a little frugal. Um, but I picked up Tea Keeper by Kathy Barrick. I love Kathy Barrick. I do. Um, so I... I'm trying to beef up, like I said before, my coffee area in my house, but I also um, do enjoy a cup of tea. So I thought this would be a nice piece. I also have a couple of friends that are tea drinkers that I was like, ooh, I could see this. I could see this being a piece that they might like. So I wanted to get some things that, um, you know, I can stitch for others as well. Um, I also picked up this. This isn't quite my, my um, style. But I thought it would be a way to, and it was really cheap. Um, and I have a couple others by, um, who is it by? Imaginating Diane Arthurs. Um, but it's Birdhouse Row. And I feel like it has like a vintagey feel. And it was, again, really cheap. So I was like, you know what? I like the elements. I can see this maybe um, being something that eventually I would want to stitch. So I picked that up. 
I picked up this Be Merry by Waxing Moon. I stitched, the first thing I ever stitched on linen was the Halloween one that's like this. Um, and I really like to be able to swap in and out of my frames. So I figured this would give me something to have up in Christmas, um, just in the same size so that I don't have to rearrange all of like my design elements for how I'm hanging my, and displaying my pieces. Even if it's not in the same frame, it's still going to be in something that's similar in size. Um, this piece I picked up, or this piece, this pattern, Stranded Jacks by Plum Street. I've had my eye on for a long time and just finally was like, I just need to buy it. I just need to have it. I love the whale down here. Um, I have a thing for whales. It's a new thing, um, but I, I, I do. I love it. Um, so they're just some Halloween smalls. Um, I would love to get like a Halloween tree up and decorated. Maybe someday. I'm terrible at finishing, so probably not, but, um, uh, you know, I like to stitch, so. Uh, this uh, Bird in Winter, Bird in the Hand Winter, um, I showed you as I was doing my Stitch Madness, the Birds with the Really Long Legs by Heart and Hand. I love that series, and this one is another one that I really like. I tend not to do, like, the whole craft, like... I'm more primitive in what I like to stitch, but some of the like more cutesy and crafty ones I like. Um, so this is one of the series that and designers that I will like kind of go for the more colorful and things like that and try to kind of intersperse them with the way we decorate in our house. We're very functional. We're not like real decorators. So like, like I said earlier, things that are up are typically there for a purpose. Um, and I don't just buy things to hang on my wall because I have my stuff on the wall. <laughs> so, you know, I don't, I, maybe if we had a bigger house, our house is tiny and, you know, it's cozy and I love it, but you know, we'll see what happens when we move on. Um, this one I've seen for a while. I took a trip to my local needlework, needlework store. Um, a strawberry sampler. And so, um, I picked this up while I was out there. And I just like how the colors change and the panels in it. Um, it's just stitched with DMC, so I thought it was cute. And then I also picked up Life After Death. Uh, the whale got me. Um, I am stitching Death by Cross Stitch, although I'm thinking I'm going to restart it. Um, I'm stitching it as a memory piece for my grandmother. Um, so I have a cigar box right here actually not planned at all um a cigar box filled with like all of her old embroidery threads she wasn't a stitcher per se but she did do some embroidery and um I thought it would be really neat to be these are more like the thicker threads that I have no idea what I'll ever do with because like it's DMC but it's DMC 12 if anybody has any ideas of what I could do with this not being an embroiderer but being like a stitcher um I'd love to, but I pulled the, the DMC type, either brand or, um, there are a couple other brands in, in there and I'm using those for the like different motifs in death by cross stitch. Um, but I'm not loving it, which makes me sad. And I want to love it, especially if it's being done in memory of her. Um, so I'm going to possibly restart on a different fabric. Um, I'm doing it on a 40 count, I think just like basic natural or something. It might have been what I did Hawk Run on, um, but it's just not popping. And so I'm thinking maybe I'll swap it to a 36 count and I'm going to be interspersing her threads with like my leftover specialty overdyed stuff from all of my other starts. Um, cause I'm not, I, I don't like measure out how many yards I have left or I don't not that organized. So, um, I'll just kind of keep those scraps together and use it for that. But, um, all that to be said, I wanted life after death as well. That was what kind of got me geared into it. Brandon also picked up castles in the air. I think, uh, if that's something that long dog, long dog samplers designed, um, that he's planning to do either monochromatic or kind of adding colors in. Um, cause he's done a lot, he's done a lot of stitching, um, but he's tended to pick and is working on now like a full coverage piece. Um, and that you need something else to kind of swap in and out. So he's, he's getting some like 
non-video game stuff kind of interspersed in with his repertoire, I guess. Um, my last stash that I did, I can't show you because it's secret stash, um, secret stitching that I will be doing. Um, but I did pick up this piece of fabric for it that you can see, and it's a 40 count Ren by I Picture This Plus. It's really, really pretty. Um, and I picked up the rest of the brown that I'll need for Halloween Eve by Blackboard Designs. Um, the chocolate or something, I don't know. Anyway, this was a lot longer than I meant for it to be. I rambled a lot. My hair was a mess. You know, how it is. I'm going to test my editing skills. We'll see. Hopefully, otherwise I'm going to have to redo all of this and that's going to be really, really sad. Um, any of you that know how to pause while you're stitching, or not stitching, filming, well, that would be great. I don't know how to do that. When I stop edit, there's no pause button. It's just start and stop. And I don't know how to do that. So we'll see if Brandon can work his magic for me. Um, anyway, that that's it for today. Um, I've got some stuff coming up. I'm still going strong with the 365 days of cross stitch though. So the plan is to at least stitch an X every day, um, no matter what's going on in my life or where I'm at. Uh, so that is the plan so far. So good. Um, we'll, we'll hope to continue that as I go. Um, Watson is a little bratty right now. Um, but anyway, Thank you for all of the likes, comments, subscriptions, all of those things. Thank you for those of you on Instagram who have given kind words and um, the comments on YouTube. You guys have been amazing. So I am, again, very excited to be joining this community and to be a part of the cross-stitching world. Have a great week. Keep stitching. <laughs>